Could you have cured him? Or any of the others that you've seen? If so, then please tell me how. I should like to know. Of course I couldn't. Then he was incurable. Yes, but to let him find out like that. Let us eat. And then we'll transplant the brain. That'll take hours. Have you somewhere to go? Ah. You did three for Hammer. Your favourite was Frankenstein. I did. With the darling Terence Fisher. I did, I did with the darling Terence Fisher. Who, for whom? I think that may have even been his, was it his last film? I think he's getting close to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. He'd had a car accident or something like that, I think, so he, or, he looked much older than he actually was. And he went around with a stick all the time and beautifully dressed. Mm -hmm. No dungarees or anything. He wore a lovely, I remember him wearing a beautiful crimson, like those curtains, a beautiful crimson sweater, lovely trousers. Oh, very, very gentlemanly gentleman he was. Lovely. But Hammer was a good place to work? I'm trying to think who did Taste the Blood of Dracula. I think it was Peter Sazdy. I think it was. Could be. Yeah. Nice guy. And the vampire lovers was Roy Ward Baker. Wonderful Roy Ward Baker. That even stretched beyond the film. That became a friendship with a family. He had a very nice gangly sort of son called Nick. Um, and and a, a, a lovely, what I would call a family affair, really, that was. Yeah, I became, I, I actually became sort of almost part of the clan. I made best friends with the first assistant who was De dear Derek Whitehurst. Um, and I can remember the lighting man. I can't remember his name, but I, could, I can see him in my mind's eye. Lovely guy. The other great one I was going to ask you quickly yes. about yes. <clears throat> was uh, the wonderful Alec Guinness and how he would check the audience. Naughty Alec, yeah. Well, we, we had a little run-in. We did Oxford and then we did... Uh, did we do anywhere else? I can't remember. I think we just did Oxford. A rehearsal room, Oxford, and then town, of course. The Lyric Theatre. Yeah, Lyric Theatre. And he, one night, after we'd been there a month, Alec, playing a disgusting old Rue doctor in it, mm. peeps through the curtain. Of course, all actors peep through the curtain. Don't mistake, they all do. They know you're there. Anyway, <laughs> through the little spy hole, a little tiny spy hole in this horrible curtain, you know. Oh, he said, I'm not going to bother tonight. They're all Japanese. <laughs> Meaning, in other words, they're all tourists. Mm. And they won't understand. So, um, uh, and of course, that is true. First month, you get folk coming because the critics have either said, we hate it or we don't like it or we love it or we want to come or whatever. That audience comes. Then everybody's forgotten that the play is there at all. But the tourists are walking past every day and, oh. So there's a there's a name for that. Is it footfall or something? Or there's a word for footfall. Pe yeah. yeah, people who just come literally right. come in off the street. The footfall. Mm -hmm. The footfall. Uh, and Alec, well, he he he's sort of semi bothered after that. Yes, he was a bit naughty. They all are. Actors are naughty. Well, I'll tell you what. There was one. I did a tour. Play I love loved and always will love, written by Frederick Lonsdale, who's a sort of Noel Coward. Mm -hmm. And I played Elmer. Little scheming Elmer, very 20s, 20s into 30s, you know. I looked exactly like my grandmother in it. I had a little wig, you know. And an actor called Jeremy Nicholas, who was doing mm. other things, moonlighting a lot during the day and just about staggering to the theatre at night. It was only a forehand. I have to give long speeches to Jeremy Nicholas, who's sitting on a on a sofa, sort of chaise long, but he's upstage, right? So he's looking away from the audience. And that piggy, I'd looked down at him and he'd fallen asleep. So I'm <laughs> plotting away and saying, we'll do this and that and the other thing and we'll get him, you know. And he's gone. Oh dear. First I noticed the red eyes and then he'd gone completely. Yes, that's shocking. actors for you. It is shocking. It is shocking, yes. How do you cope? How do you cope? That's the question. Well, just How with patience. How would you cope? Yes. Just give the guy a nudge. Yes. Chuck yes. a shoe at him. Yeah, we were on tour with it, you see, and so he'd obviously had a long drive or something, yeah. Oh, there you go. Jeremy Lick Nicholas used to do um, a one-man show. You should know this. Jeremy Nicholas? No, I'm not sure. Three Men in a Boat. Jerome K. Jerome. Ah. Years ago. Yep. The old Jimmy Edwards film, wasn't it? I think you're right. 
handlebar moustache. Do you know why he had a handlebar moustache? No. I learned that the other day from Barry Cryer. Go on. Yeah. I Tell think me. he was very badly burnt as a kid. I think he was in an orphanage or something um, sad like that. He had a very sad background. Uh, anyway, he was scarred, and that's why he grew the moustache. So there we are. I think that was a Barry Cryer story. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know. So whether you're into the latest releases or prefer to go behind the scenes with some of our greatest filmmakers, please do subscribe to our channel. We post new videos every week, so there's always plenty to see. Here's a couple more from Rabbit and Snail that you might want to check out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.